This video is brought to you by Trend Micro's Cleaner One Pro. This is the Apple Studio display. It holds my personal waiting time record of 5 months. The Apple Studio display is often a casualty on the battleground of monitor wars, where most people compare it and judge it alongside regular monitors. I could relate to that, knowing I had plenty of time to rethink my $2,000 purchase. Now that I have it though, I realize that it's a lot more than just a 27-inch display. If we manage to see it through the lens of an all-in-one extension to the Mac, it is undoubtedly a winner in a battle of none. Allow me to explain. But before I deep dive into that statement, I'd like to point out another all-in-one solution, a disk cleaning manager. Trend Micro's Cleaner One Pro is inconspicuously assisting me by managing my disk space, startup apps and services and much more. It lives in the menu bar in the form of a beautifully designed toolbar monitoring the CPU, network and memory usage. Once expanded, it can scan and delete junk files in just one click. A new recently added fantastic feature is the battery health monitor, which provides valuable information such as battery temperature, cycles and overall health. I use Cleaner One Pro on a daily basis to uninstall unwanted apps and the disk map tool helps me declutter my SSD. The most used feature is of course the smart scan that cleans, protects and optimizes the Mac with a press of a button. Cleaner One Pro is an all-around fixer that's worth checking out by going to the first link in the description below and installing it for free. So at a glance the Apple Studio display looks like Steve Rogers. Not Captain Steve Rogers but Steve Rogers before he was introduced to the serum and became Captain America. It's a zero button, no HDMI or display port, low 60Hz, no HDR or local dimming zones, an unrotatable expensive science experiment that might not make sense on paper. Most people place it next to a 4K monitor that costs three or four times less and call it a Fruit Loop because all Fruit Loops have the same flavor. But the fact of the matter is that the studio display is not a Fruit Loop, it's a five course meal at an exquisite dining restaurant. So let's break it down. It is a 5K panel coming in with a native resolution of 5120 by 2880, resulting in a pixel density of 218 pixels per inch. It is exactly what a 5K iMac can offer and one of the sharpest panels you can get on a Mac without having a permanently attached computer on the back. The 5K resolution is essential here because it is precisely double an equivalent 2560 by 1440p display, which means you get perfectly proportioned UI elements. 5K is what Mac OS is optimized for and you can expect pixel perfect rendering without any blurred images shimmering when scrolling and more patterns. Actually, we talk more about this in my weekly newsletter, which I'll place in the description below. If you select any of the other scaling options, you can of course witness a GPU interference to help you render the picture. The lack of local dimming zones is not a concern to me, even though it would have been nice to have. The only time the studio display bends the knee is when it's placed side by side to an XDR MacBook Pro where you can see the difference in panel technology in pitch black. You of course get P3 white color support as well as True Tone where the ambient light sensor automatically adjusts the color temperature to the environment. Something I cannot afford to use given my field of work. What I enjoy most and take full advantage of with this display is excellent color uniformity and consistency between all Apple devices. Taking it out of the box, you'll know that you're getting one of the best factory calibrated displays that match and represent the picture just as well as your iPhone, iPad and MacBook. It is rated at 600 nits brightness, but from what I've seen online, people measure it close to 700. In real life, to me, that translates to finding max brightness too much to use for extended periods of time, despite working in a very bright environment. In other words, it is plenty bright and double what most 4K displays offer. Now, I didn't opt for the nano texture coating because I never placed my monitors facing windows. And with the standard anti-reflective glossy panel, I can enjoy a sharper image with deeper blacks, which to me matters most. And this is where any similarities you might have noticed with other displays end. Everything that follows is unmatched by other monitors, hence me saying that the studio display is a winner in a battle of none. Since this monitor is powered by an A13 Bionic chip, you get a 12 megapixel ultra-wide camera with center stage. There were plenty of complaints about picture quality in early reviews, but half a year later, and I don't know how many software updates, I have nothing to complain about. I've tested quite a few dedicated webcams, and I have to say that the studio display handles exposure quite well. Now, it might be noisy a bit, but that's okay. It's a small sensor. Center stage comes in very handy in FaceTime calls, and overall, 
I'm very happy having this camera at my disposal without attaching an ugly doohickey on the top of this beautiful display. The monitor has a studio quality 3 mic array and I have to admit, I'm very impressed by the way they sound. If I run them through my voice preset, I could even use them for some voiceovers if necessary. Plus, we all know that sounding good is more important than looking good. What makes this mic and camera combo special here is their availability. They're not in your face, yet they're there when you need them and when you need them, you know that you won't be embarrassed by how you conduct yourself on the other end of the line. Chances are, you'll look just as good as the others and sound much better. And then there are the built-in speakers. This monitor sounds phenomenal. It fills a 700 square feet room without hesitation, deformation or bending, even at max volume. If you've heard what a 16 inch MacBook Pro sounds like, this sounds much better, louder and deeper. Apple stated that this is the highest fidelity speaker system ever created on a Mac and I believe them. It defeats most of the desk setup speakers you can get and it stays toe to toe with some of the entry level studio monitors. I am very impressed and so are the people who stop by my desk and accidentally ask me where the sound comes from. Just as impressive as the sound system is the product's aesthetics and build quality. The industrial craftsmanship can only be matched by the Pro Display XDR or the previous generation Thunderbolt display. I wasn't expecting any less in terms of unboxing experience, although I was extremely surprised by the sheer weight of the box. I know how much Apple is into reducing packaging in the name of, you know, the carbon footprint, but I honestly think that the studio display box compensates for probably about 50 iPhone boxes. And since I never thought Apple boxes, I need to extend the house to store this somewhere. Just kidding, of course. Although I'm not kidding, if you end up enjoying this video, subscribe, because why not? Aside from the black Apple stickers, the only important thing in the box is the one meter braided Thunderbolt cable. The power supply is internal, which is fantastic, and so is the power cable, which I couldn't care less that it doesn't come out easily. I opted for the height adjustable stand, which is $600 less expensive than the $1000 XDR stand, yet it's $400 more than what I wanted to pay. Nevertheless. I got it because it allows me to tuck the laptop below the monitor and use a vertical SBS setup without lifting up the display. If you're wondering what SBS is, check out my dual monitor guide, which I'll link at the end of this video. No matter which stand option you opt for, you can expect the most sturdy anchored display out there and one of the few displays you'd want to keep centered in a room so you can admire it from the back. Usually with most desk setups, the monitor neighbors the wall and most often than not, it hides some ugly cables and maybe even a dock or a hub. But in a world of plastic monitors, you'd be proud to display the back of this product. The studio display is as gorgeous to look at from the back as it is from the front. I noticed a few peculiar facts over the weeks of usage. The first is that the studio display is the quickest to summon, giving you an almost instant wake. Another quirky fact pointed out by a friend of mine is sort of like an always on display when plugging to charge an iPad, for example. All updates happen via the Mac and no, there are no on-screen controls on this monitor. There are three additional ports on the back besides the main Thunderbolt port that support up to 10 gigabits per second each. And you might've noticed that I taped an additional hub for SD card and USB a support in the back, which is pretty much it for me. So there are two main questions I personally cared about when placing the order that I'd like to address. The first one is, is the studio display a good MacBook Pro companion, knowing that the latest 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pros come with an XDR display that supports ProMotion and 120 Hertz? The answer is yes. Although the studio display is only 60 Hertz, you don't witness any sluggish or lesser behavior even if you wing it alongside a ProMotion laptop. They work perfectly in tandem because after all, that's what they're made for. Second, can you justify the price tag? Hmm. Well, if you place the studio display next to any other 4K IPS display at 60 Hertz, the answer is of course, no. But if you compare it to a higher end 4K panel, throwing in some decent entry level studio monitors, a proper external webcam and microphone, plus a hub, things are starting to make more sense. I'd like to throw another product in the mix, and that is the 12-year-old Apple Thunderbolt display. This is a product that 12 years later 
looks, performs and behaves better than most of its competitors over the years. The reason I'm mentioning the Thunderbolt display is longevity. Just as the Thunderbolt display, the studio display is expected to sit proudly on your desk delivering its best without pretending to be something that it's not. Now if you're looking for a great monitor, there are plenty of choices out there. In fact, I'll soon release an update to my monitor guide which has some crazy new products that you should definitely check out. However, if you're looking for the best extension to your Mac, then look no further than the studio display. If you enjoyed this video, check out my monitor playlist as well as my monitor guide. Like and subscribe to the channel as well as my newsletter. And as always, it's been an absolute pleasure. This is Z, over and out.